What's up everybody? Today we're gonna go to the property and I'm gonna give you some updates. So let's get into it. I also just realized why am I wearing this code to the property? Okay. okay, so what I'm headed to do right now is Cody has been taking out trees. Once that we previously marked, they are dead or they're gonna damage another tree or they're just really small and it's just a view obstruction at that point. Maybe some will replant of those. Anyway, Cody's taking a good amount out. He's saying, I wanna go rent out equipment to take out the stumps. And I'm saying, can we just make sure that we got everything we could possibly do without the machinery so that when we have it, it's the most efficient time period with that rental equipment and we don't have to go get a rental later for the same thing. Okay, updates. So Cody started a fire at the property. That's an update. <laughs> He literally comes home one day so pissed off. He's like ignoring my calls while he was at the property. Okay, I'll preface it with we agreed. So he knows where I stand on this. We agreed to not burn without talking to the township, without talking to each other. And he just gets to the property super ambitious one day and like, today's the day. Anyway, it started spreading to a pile that he didn't anticipate it spreading to. It wasn't like huge but he just wanted to err on the side of caution and he had to call the fire department and they literally came and put out the fire. <laughs> So we learned a lesson. When I say we, I mean Cody. <laughs> and we actually haven't told anybody this, so mom and dad, we're okay. Hi. Okay, we're back. So that was good. I think we're good to go in terms of renting equipment to take out stumps on the higher ground. And then he has a whole bunch more of small trees, basically shrub type stuff along the hill in a part of the wetlands as well. So there's a lot more work to do. So I'm going to update you guys on the design. So I've pretty much lost my damn mind. <laughs> Actually, it was like a week straight. I think I was going absolutely insane. I'll rewind. We had the floor plan. We loved it. It was great. It was exactly what we wanted but we kept adding square footage here and there and like in the hallway areas it wasn't adding like another kitchen or it wasn't adding another bathroom it was kind of hallway space and the logistics of the home and our architect was encouraging us oh well you know it's not going to be the most expensive cost per square footage but it is more so why don't you go ahead and send this to a builder to evaluate for costs even though we're not quite there yet with dimensioning the plans and things like that so we had a 2d representation and an idea of what certain finishes were and we sent that to some builders from these builders we were consistently not getting a thorough cost analysis and that was very frustrating to me and it still is as an engineer I want someone to put in the work and not just give a general cost off the hip of like this much per square footage and that's what we kept getting but what they kept saying was like 250 275 even 300 we were getting these costs that were like hey but that's not good enough it's got to come in lower it was frustrating because a couple of them bluntly said you might want to look at reducing the square footage and that was something i didn't want to hear because i felt like we had a point solution with the floor plan that we had there was nowhere you can make a room smaller or anything like that it was it was already minimized with the configuration that we had so i kind of ghosted my architect and this is where i went crazy i like I ghosted them for a week because I didn't want to dump this on them like hey we got to rethink everything and have them start over and make us pay for iterations I wanted to go to them with like hey here is a better solution that is less square footage that we're comfortable with so previously I was like hey let's move on to the next stage and then I kind of ghosted them for a minute so I could like rethink everything and I felt like I was on this deadline because I don't like leaving people hanging so that's what happened I basically redid the floor plan in in pretty much a week's time. <laughs> I love the plan now. I loved it before, but I, it is perfect now for us. It's perfect for the views. Where the windows are in relation to the views is even better than it was before. It makes the living room feel so much more grand and I can even tell that Cody likes it more. So we sent that to the architect and that's what we're running with now. It actually did reduce the square footage about somewhere between 80 to 100 square feet. So every little bit helps and it makes it feel bigger though which is so badass. It was daunting at first during that week because I'm like okay if I have to redo the configuration 
situation, I was blocking things again. And what I mean by that is I was putting, okay, view here, kitchen here. Like I was like trying to re-block the house and it was so scary because I felt like I was starting over. But we did end up taking a lot from the previous iteration, but made it better and just make more logistical sense. It was daunting because it's like when you're blocking things out like that, it's like, oh my God, it really sets in like there's infinite permutations, combinations of like what this house can look like. And for me in particular, a lot of people can make a 2D plan work for them and get a front elevation that they can roll with. For me, the front elevation was very sensitive to the 2D floor plan. So it was a lot of like, hey, I like this 2D, what does front elevation look like? And going back and forth and that iterative process was so, I was staying up to like 2 a.m. every day. I just wanted to find a solution. I was dreaming about it. I was going literally nuts. <laughs> I will say ever since like I was like I'm building my dream house one day I had always imagined kind of a loft over the kitchen so you know you have a couple bedrooms upstairs but over the kitchen area you kind of have a landing space in your second story that overlooks the living room and has a railing and I didn't get that in our initial design I was like oh no it makes sense it'll be better for heating and cooling we can do a cool feature ceiling over the living space as shown like I was rolling with it and it's crazy because we ended up going back to that we ended up going back to having a loft over the kitchen so if I have any pieces of advice like if you have a vision don't deviate from that because it can set you off your course a little bit and I do think that original floor plan was not meant for us and and I'm really excited by this new one so we're rolling with it it's less square footage better views of the property better design grander living space we're obsessed <laughs> so we send that to the architect and the next step was our 3d model review view and we had that it was December 29th over Christmas break I walked in the room and freaked out so here's that reveal I think it went good I think it went awesome I think we just got to figure out some window placements they are bringing to the table some different ideas relative to window placement that I didn't have um, and it brings in a lot of light and views and it looks badass but I also like some rooms to feel more cozy and frankly speaking you can tell we're just that far along now like it feels like we're finally reducing the big changes we're talking about little moves of doors and windows and bumping some walls here and there but it's really minimal changes in three now. Three you walk in the room and it was on the screen heard the angel singing <laughs> wait does that mean i died we're going to chick-fil-a in celebration first i had a tipper twenty thousand ones got the goods It just was jaw dropping to see it. And I do have the 3D CAD that I built, but seeing it in color and in the quality from a professional, it was just a dream come true. <laughs> so January 16th, we're going to be receiving the dimensioned windows, dimensioned walls, everything except the foundation information that a builder can start to go quote. So we can do a check-in on that. It's just becoming all the more real and I'm so lit about it. <laughs> a couple months ago when we had that ocean moment with builders on the size and the cost we were like they were being very general on cost so we just kept surveying around to other builders so before we were like hey this is our builder and now we're saying hey we're gonna get bids you got a bid on the project and you got to win the business so I'm gonna put them against each other and we'll see how it goes so our initial survey and the stakes around the border was done by this really reputable company they've done an amazing job and just are awesome <laughs> so we reached out to them they're doing a topographic analysis so I think right now we have a topo survey from the county that's like shows the elevation changes every maybe three or five feet but they go I believe that they go every one foot of grade change that they document and then they will help to propose kind of where the house wants to sit with the walkout how you grade the property how we're gonna do the pole barn and how we're gonna integrate the driveway so that's all things they'll prepare on what's called a site plan and I hope I can go out the day that they come out to measure the elevation so that's scheduled should be be in the next two three weeks I think they're gonna come out and do that so many updates this video is probably so long but so much has happened so what I did work on on Christmas break was keeping in mind that our floor plan is 
done i love it it's perfect once we get these dimension plans from the architect the builder is going to be able to do quoting i learned from one of the builders more about that process and he's like i'll pick like a floor i'll pick this that and the other and then that'll be my assumptions for the quote and i'm like oh shit like if i hate it i don't want to then then start researching the materials and then go order samples and it be four weeks before i get back to you with like the flooring i actually want so i decided over christmas break i spent a whole week making interior design mood boards so i'm so excited to share that with you guys basically i was doing the palette for each room so in doing that i was considering any wall paneling the flooring the counters the tile the furniture the fixtures the lighting everything for that room room by room so in doing that it helped me to narrow down okay what are the materials that i consider for the house and much to cody's uh disappointment we did have to shovel out some money buying samples so we were getting Tile Bar, Home Depot, Wayfair, certain companies for specialty items to start understanding what our flooring and what the palette will look like. That way when the builder does their quote, we can move a lot faster because I'm like, actually, no, this is the flooring I want and we can just roll. And then my last update is being that it was Christmas, I've been very grateful to have been gifted and also purchased with Christmas money some items for the house. Like the big furniture stuff we're going to do later, this is stuff that will really help to enable the lifestyle that I envision in this house. So these are things to host with. These are things to have tea in the greenhouse and in specialty designer teapots and teaware and glassware and things from Finland, custom teapot from Taiwan. Just really excited and it just helps actually just build the momentum more towards what we're doing, having things in hand for the house. We're tucking them away into storage so it'll be like Christmas when we move into the house because we're not going to use any of this stuff until then rolling cart for the kitchen salt and pepper shakers just random things all right thank you guys for watching this was probably the longest update video ever but as always i appreciate you watching and sticking with us on millennials making modern we will see you in the next one take care